I know somebody's listening, and he hears everything that I say. Well, I know somebody answers every prayer that I secretly pray. Well, I know somebody loves me. And he never will turn me away To Jesus on Mount Calvary And he hears everything that I say Learning, learning to you Every day I, I am learning I'm learning y'all to Yes, I'm learning, learning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, lean, to lean on Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. Finding, I'm finding more power Yeah, than I've ever, than I've ever This morning's scripture is coming from the book of Psalms, 100 verses 1 through 5, a psalm of thanksgiving. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, sing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord, the Lord is God. He made us, we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. His faithfulness continues through each generation. Now let us pray. Lord, Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you and worship in spirit and truth. We thank you for watching over us last night as we slept and slumbered. We thank you for the roof that was over our head, the clothing that were on our back, the food we're allowed to eat, the vehicles we're allowed to drive and ride in, place of worship, place of employment, place of higher learning we're allowed to drive these vehicles to. Under the protection of your traveling grace, we just want to say thank you. Well, Father God, we ask you that you continue to guide our steps, our speech, and our actions. We pray that you continue to strengthen us in the areas that are weak and humble us in the areas that we are strong. 
Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for the remission of our sins. We thank you for all the blessings and praises that you give to us, Lord Father God. Special prayer for the sick, the shut-in, the bereaved families, those who are incarcerated, and those who, who struggle with addiction. We pray that you touch them a lot in the hear, see, and feel, that you still sit high, and you still look low. You're still in the forgiveness business, and you're still in the healing business, Father God. We just want to say thank you. We pray for all the church of crisis of this world. Praying for the brotherhoods, the leadership, the congregations, and the membership. Praying for church growth and an increase in ministries. Lord, Father God, we pray that this service is uplifting to the viewers. Most of all, we pray that it's pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Again, this princely privilege to be alive today at this time, at this hour that God has said for us to be here. Relative to the disquieting current events in uh, our country right now, I want to give you a message this morning on the subject of peace in a nation of racism. Peace in a nation of racism. Our text for this morning is John chapter 14. John chapter 14, I will be reading verse number 25 through verse number 27. Peace in a nation of racism. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, 
whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. Verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Again, verse number 27 says, not the kind of peace that the world gives, but our Lord says, my peace I leave uh, with you. Our text this morning suggests that there is a kind of peace offered by the world that is different from the peace of the Lord. Uh, today's lesson will almost certainly, this is a warning, today's lesson will almost certainly be difficult for, for some of you. You see, black church members are traditionally uneasy when the subject of race is spoken about in church. But these are indeed uneasy times. Let me say that again. These are indeed uneasy times. America is witnessing some of the ugliest, uh, unpeaceful politics and racial revulsion I have seen during my entire lifetime. Race, oh, it's all about race. But races are not specifically our struggle. The elephant in the room is the structure of racism. For example, when most European Americans, white people, are asked about racism, they describe being racist as a personal act of malice. They cannot put their mind around a system of racism. In their minds, because I do not do specific acts that are racist personally, they cannot fathom uh, a system of racism. They cannot see the system. The median white household held roughly 10 times the net worth of the median black household last year. That's a system in place keeping it that way. The average black worker earns 73 cents on the dollar compared to his or her white colleagues. There's a structure that keeps that so. Uh, even black college graduates earn 20% less than their white counterparts. White people cannot see that there is a system that gets unarmed black men shot by police and armed white men get arrested peacefully. There is a system, there is a structure that has, set, has been set up. White people can, uh, white people find it hard to believe that there is a structure in place designed to keep communities of color from thriving while promoting and advancing white neighborhoods. But after watching the welcoming interaction between law enforcement and the Capitol building invaders last week. Uh, in contrast to how black protesters are treated, it should be clear to each and every person in America that there are systems in place that work against people of color. There can be no doubt that there exists a very powerful structure in place designed to keep power and advancement away from black and brown people in this country. 
this fear of a browning America has aided in the downward spiral of hatred, domestic terrorism, immigration prejudice, police murdering unarmed black people, and racial division that rips at the very seam of our nation. White nationalist groups are now very sizable, active, and willing to do whatever they feel is necessary to maintain their perceived superior position and to restrict brown and black people from any pursuit of happiness. These individuals have positioned themselves in various segments of our society. Professionals, they are politicians, they are government officials, they are supervisors, they are HR directors, they are judges, they are lawyers. Uh, and it is often said that there are only a few bad apples in law enforcement. But the truth is, there are many, many bad white national apples in um, uh, law enforcement agencies and police departments all over this country. Racists can be found everywhere. Angry, low-income racists storm the White House, storm, I'm sorry, storm the Capitol building, but also, there were angry um, government officials at the highest level that also participated in uh, the insurrection on the Capitol building. This acceleration of white nationalism and racial hatred did not start with Donald Trump, though it has undoubtedly speeded up during his woefully unqualified four years in office. This sleeping giant of hate was awakened beginning in the early hours of 2008 when Barack Obama took office. We've seen this picture even in the Bible before. Donald Trump is a modern day Saul that the people of Israel wanted against the wishes of God. And just like Saul of the Bible, when America chose Trump, they inherited the consequences of someone rejected by God. What has repulsed me most about all of this is that these agents of hate call themselves Christians. It's shameful. It's disgusting. And white racist America must repent and implore God and those they have mistreated for forgiveness. But that is probably not going to happen. So let me digress with a word of comfort this morning. A word of comfort to those trying to make it to heaven. To those who are amiable towards love, reconciliation, and peace. As our textual narrative unfolds in the book of John, our Lord was literally, literally within uh, the sight of the cross. The insurrectionist mob had stormed the Garden of Eden and taken him. They had been led into the garden by one of the Lord's own, up into uh, one of the Lord's own Capitol Hill police and disciples, been betrayed for over 30 pieces of silver. The Lord was hours away from beatings and sufferings and crucifixion at the hands of the very people that he came to save. And yet he was concerned about his followers. He looked down through his own suffering and he tells his followers that he must leave them, but that he would leave with them 
his peace. Uh, if you are a person of color living in America today, you are in need of some peace. Verse number 26 of our text calls this peace the helper or the comforter. Parakletos, it is a legal term. It means one who pleads another's case or cause. The Lord said, I'm leaving you, but I'm going to leave a comforter with you. Someone who will plead your case and your cause. Uh, 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 someone who is a counsel of defense. Someone who is a legal assistant. Someone who is an advocate for the needy. That's who the spirit is. That's the peace that the Lord left for us in our text. Our lesson this morning, this peace uh, that the Lord leaves is not given by anyone. Something in this text makes this peace special. Oh, it was left by someone special. You see, politicians can't give us this peace. CEOs of corporations cannot provide us with this peace. Your supervisor is not equipped to pass on this peace. Family members whom you love so dear cannot bring you this peace. Oh, this peace cannot be found in the Senate. This peace cannot be found in the Congress. This peace cannot be found in the White House. This peace will not come from the Supreme Court. This peace is a special kind of peace. Verse number 27 says, the Lord says, peace I leave. My peace, he says, I leave this peace. This peace comes from me. My peace I leave. Oh, this peace is a personal promise from the Prince of Peace. Uh, this peace is different from anything the world has to offer. Not as the world gives, verse 27 said. This peace is not the same peace that the world gives. You see, the world's peace exists if you are privileged. It exists if you are wealthy, if you are connected, if you are of the right skin color. You can have the world's peace. The peace of this world, though, is not equitable. The peace of this world, the laws are not fair. Its systems are biased. Its wealth constructs are rigged against some people in this society. Oh, this peace. There is one positive thing that comes out of the ugliness of this world's version of peace. I said there is one thing positive for me personally that comes out of the world's ugly version of peace. And uh, it, makes, it makes me long for the Lord's peace. You see, when I taste the world's peace, it makes me long for the Lord's peace. The evil of this world makes me want a peace that when dark clouds may rise and strong winds may blow, I can tell the world wherever I go that I found a savior and that peaceful savior is sweet. Oh, I know this peace, the world's peace is a heart soother if you will allow it to. I said it is a heart soother if you will allow it to do so. Verse 27 says, let not your hearts be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. The word trouble here means to stir as to agitate water. To stir as to agitate water. Literally, the text is telling us, the Lord is saying to us, don't let this world agitate you. Don't let what you see coming across your TV agitate you. Don't let the scenes in Washington agitate you. Don't let the racists in this country agitate you. Don't let the hate of this world agitate you because we found a savior. 
and his peace is sweet. Oh, I know. Let not your heart be troubled. Oh, Daniel could sleep peacefully in the lion's den because of this peace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could walk around in the fiery furnace because of this peace. Moses could challenge Pharaoh to let God's people go because he had this peace. As people of God and people of color living in America, we must carry with us the peace that David had when he said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. David was saying the Lord's peace is with me. And we ought to take the Lord's peace with us wherever we go. Oh, this is a peace that was around before the world was created. This peace is the prince of peace. This peace is our rock in a weary land. This peace is our rose of Sharon. This peace told the woman at the well that everything that she had, told her everything that she had done. This peace made spittle one day from the ground, touched a man's eye, and he received sight. This peace walked up to the grave of Lazarus and called his name, and Lazarus came forth. Oh, this peace stood on the Sea of Galilee one day, walked up and looked at the sea. I can just see the Lord, the Lord thinking, now, I made this sea. I made this wind. And the Lord proclaimed, peace, be still. This peace, this power of peace, this peace of the Lord that passes all understanding, this is the same kind of peace, people of God, that we have and we possess today. All we have to do is embrace this peace because it does not matter what man does. It does not matter what hatred comes our way. It does not matter what races we interact with. God has left us a comforter. God has left us peace. And he says, it is my peace, not the peace that the world gives to you, but my peace I leave with you. Go in peace this morning, people of God. Though the storms of life are raging around us, go in peace of the Prince of Peace. And may God bless you, and may he bless you exceedingly well. As we partake of the cup, and the bread yeah. we do remember, remember the blood Jesus that he shed and this Jesus said to the, to the twelve, twelve earnestly all this you do in remembrance please do If for the 
prize we have given After our labors are old Then rest to our souls will be given On that eternal shore Blessed King, tomorrow we will be free from all kings and wherefore let no night in the storm we are sighing for thee. The green is Yes, a sweet rest is remaining for the true children of God. Oh, where there won't be no complaining. Lost in a fire and a never a chasing rod. Only at the home of the soul, of the soul, the blessed King, Tom Don't you wanna be free from all kids and wherefore? Sighing for thee, the beautiful home of the ransom. Right beside the fury, still still sing. Now soon the bright homeland of Zoning, and we shall behold the glad dawn. On the Lord till the morning And trust till the night is gone Only at the home, home of the soul Blessed King, of Don't you wanna be free? Don't you wanna be free?